As evening fell, the two friends continued to share many experiences and told each other their unfulfilled dreams. But something was occupying Zane's mind, of which Rosina was still unaware. Zane kept all his secrets carefully confined to his heart. He pretended to be cheerful and pleasant, but inside he was planning something clever. His idea was ready, and now it was time to put it into action. The next morning, Zeni rolled his eyes and complained, "My dear Rosina, I really enjoy your company, but I often get so bored sitting at home. The void in me is consuming me." I feel like a captive in the confines of the four walls. I feel so suffocated. He fumbled and choked on his words, and he recalled the hide and seek games and other games that he would play in with his friends around the mulberry forest. Now there were tears in his eyes, and he felt very sad. Rosina felt sad to learn of Zeni's sadness, but she decided to stay calm. At times she had thoughts of letting Zeni go but realized that Zeni has now become far too precious to her. Rosina tried her best to comfort Zeni but he remained unyielding. He continued to be sad and a cloud of gloom prevailed over both of them. After a couple of days Rosina felt a twinge of guilt when she noticed Zenith growing sorrow. Now Zenith was quick to spot the shifting expressions on Rosina's face. Taking advantage of this, Zenith sniffed a little more and in a persuasive tone, he said, "My dear Rosina, don't you see how monotonous our lives have become? Let's do something interesting. We live only once." So Rosina Let's spice up our life. So what exactly is brewing in your mind? inquired Rosina. Well, I am sure there are many mysterious and interesting tales in Kasna. So why don't we snoop around and discover those hidden tales? said Zeni. Rosina replied. After she thought for a few minutes, "Okay, Zeni, now tell me What exactly is it that you want to do? With a sudden burst of energy, Zeni flew off his perch from the chair and said, "Rosina, stitch me a cloak and I shall fly around Kasna every day and bring you some hidden tales." The enthusiasm in Zeni's tone was infectious. A short ripple of excitement gripped Rosina. And she said, "Okay, Zeni, I will let you go in search of stories, but you shall never try to escape. You are small, and there are birds of prey prowling over around Kasna. They might hunt you down. Don't worry, Rosina. I will be very careful." Zeni said. The excitement was clear on his face as he said. Please 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 stitch me a cloak and I shall begin my adventure from tomorrow. The next day Rosina oiled her sewing machine and began stitching. By evening a hooded cloak was ready. Zeni wrapped his arms around Rosina and hugged her in delight. When Zeni put on the cloak it dangled around his tiny waist. Rosina got out her needle and put it two little tucks now the cloak fit him perfectly zeni could barely contain his excitement he stayed awake all through the night and with the first rays of the sun he left for his maiden scouting expedition to rosina who was waiting his return time seemed to crawl there was no sign of zeni as the sun began to set and rosina was now growing restless she kept staring at the clock every tick made her more anxious waiting at the door rosina cursed herself 
for agreeing to Zeni's demand. It had also begun to rain. She pulled out her umbrella and locked her home to go out searching for Zeni.